Hi guys, this is Pastillion. Welcome to another Scary for Tarkov video. Today I am doing a full rundown of everything that just happened in the Tarkov TV that was on the 1st of June or uh, last day of May uh, 2024. It's got a fair bit to cover on what's in development, where it's all going, and uh, when the wipe is. So, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, so whilst I was taking my notes, I tried to put them in like groups and, and orders and all that so you guys can hopefully get it in a fluid motion, but we'll see how we go. Um, and we'll have any pop-ups come up on the screen if there's anything to show you. So starting off, um, BSG are going to be at TwitchCon EU showcasing Arena and Tarkov. So if you're going to be going to Rotterdam in Netherlands, um, you can go in and see that. The roadmap will be live anytime now, any moment now. So that'll be popped up on the screen, but it'll be available on their Twitter and also... I imagine you'll be able to get a link to that via the launcher and in their forums. Uh, if you are seeing this within a probably an hour or two of the actual cast, the promo codes are as follows. Killer, Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Ground Zero, Obdol Boss, that's O-B-D-O-L-B-O-S, and Thick with two Cs, T-H-I-C-C. Are right, there your five promo codes? I've, I've claimed mine, but I don't actually uh, know what's in them yet. Apparently, you'll get some contacts, uh, a heap of stims, a graphics card, and some other stuff. Cool. So, in an upcoming patch sometime in the next few weeks, by the sounds of it. All right. They're going to have the first of the arena linking uh, patches. I believe it's, it, by the sounds of it, it's in the next few weeks. We'll obviously know a little bit better detail once the, um, once the roadmap comes out. There is going to be a patch a week or two after that. And then, obviously, there'll be later patches on, which will include the wipe. But we'll go in chronological order. For the arena linking. So they're going to have a, a patch for the arena. They'll be linking. And your main character will be actually playable on arena. And you'll um, on arena, and you'll be able to level up your skills on arena for your main character in Escape from Tarkov. And you'll be able to transfer back and forth uh, your, you know, your loot. So you will be able to send any loot you want from your PvP character across to arena. And your arena character back to your PvP. You will not be able to send... Uh, items from your arena, sorry, your PVE character to arena, but you'll be able to send arena character to PVE if you wish though. There is going to be a new trader and that new trader's name is Reth. He'll be in both arena and EFT. Uh, he's going to be having new clothing available. There's initially going to be three lots of new clothing that will be both usable in arena and EFT. And his main actual currency is going to be GP coins. You can find them in Escape from Tarkov. Any of the current trades that are on other traders for GP coins will get moved across to him. Uh, and you'll also be able to achieve and earn the GP coins in Arena. So therefore, you'll be able to use those coins to actually buy stuff in your main game of Escape from Tarkov. There's going to be keys that you'll be able to earn from Arena that will unlock places within the Escape from Tarkov maps. Um, there's going to be new tasks from the actual main like in the from the trader in Escape from Tarkov that we'll be able to complete by doing arena and also some new crafts that will be added. Uh, it didn't. I don't know if they're actually unlocked by the new trader, but they're actually they look like they're linked to arena and maybe items from arena. As for the arena itself, it, there will be a uh, a new secure container that you'll be able to actually unlock. It's going to be from the arena quest chain, uh, and it's going to be a ten square container, but it's going to be a two by two. With a 1x2, a 1x2, and a 1x2. So that makes sense. You'll have a, a four square and then three lots of doubles. Uh, and then that will be your secure container you can unlock by doing a quest chain within Arena. Um, so if you don't want to uh, go all the way to Kappa or if you want to get that on the way to Kappa, you'll have that option for it. Now, some really good news moving forward with the PvE mode. So people are using the PvE mode as a single player uh, a lot. About 70% of the people that are actually playing in the PvE mode are doing it solo and not with other people. They're liking the progression by themselves. So what BSG is doing is a technical update around the middle of June by the sounds of it that's going to make it that if you are not queuing in with anyone else, you'll be queuing in on your own personal PC and you'll host your own server locally, which means you won't be taking up any of their infrastructure to be able to play solo and you'll be able to get into queues instantly, just like you were doing in an offline mode normally in Escape from Tarkov. This will free up a lot of the actual players to be able to queue their queues in the co-op mode, then there'll be a lot less uh, matching times because they'll free up a lot of space. Because currently, if you go into an actual raid right now, uh, in a PvE mode, you are taking up one of their serve positions and you're by yourself. So they're going to host that all locally on your own personal computer, and therefore everyone else will be able to play it uh, in the you know on the actual BSG servers and they'll be hosted you know through the servers. So. 
This is a big win for PvE mode, and a lot of people will be able to get instant queue times because you'll be able to queue in by yourself personally on your personal computer, and there won't be any matching time. You'll just skip straight past that. With huge win right there. They're also working on improvements to the PvE AI. Apparently, it's too bot-like and too easy for you guys, so you wanted it harder. This will probably just mean that we're going to be more aimbot. Once this actual patch is implemented where you will be able to queue up on your personal computer for the single solo PVE mode, that is that when they're going to release it, that you can purchase the PVE mode uh, for a standard or one of the other accounts that's not EOD or Unheard Edition. They're also adding an ability to wipe your PVE account. There is no forced wipes on the PVE accounts at all, but they're going to make it that if you choose to wipe it, you will have that option. Now, sometime soon, which is broad, but sometime very soon by sounds of it, there's going to be a Unity 2022 update for the ETS. So they're going to do some testing on the on the ETS servers before they put it into the main branch of the public game for everyone. So um, if you want to know what that means, it really just means you've got a better tool set to do more performance updates and uh, make the actual game more refined. It's like going to, I don't know, Home Depot or Bunnings if you're in Australia and buying a, a budget set of tools or then getting the Rolls Royce of 800 piece tool set you actually get more options and ability to actually do stuff more finely tuned. So that's pretty much what a, a, a natural update will do and hopefully give them the tools to actually optimize the game better. Um, but they did say that with this update, when they do actually implement it, it will help them add better graphics to the game and stuff like that. They're actually going to be doing an update to the armor system. So the way that's going to work is they're going to pretty much listen to what we've been saying or people have been saying where they're not happy with how, you know, you not don't know where you're protected and the plates aren't working as they think they should be and that kind of stuff. So what they're pretty much doing, by the sounds of it, all the plates will have a set amount of area that will cover. And if the front plate of your actual armor will always cover your collarbone and also part of your armpit. So therefore, there's going to be less risk to you getting armpitted when you're actually wearing plates. So if you're wearing like a soft armor, I think that you won't be as protected and your arm, arm hitbox and that won't work as well. But... If you're actually wearing armor plates, you'll actually have the cover for your collarbone and your armpits. Now, don't quote me on that exactly. It was a bit wishy-washy what he was trying to say. He did read it out, but so that's how I understand it. But maybe it'll be uh, it'll be a lot more clear cut. But it sounds like you're going to have a lot more protection from armor, which means you'll be a lot easier to survive, particularly against scabs when you get like, I don't know, an SKS scab from across the map hitting you in an armpit. Next up is the, there's going to be a new quest line called Nostalgia. Now, this whole quest line is pretty much in the game or going to be added to the game, which I'm pretty sure there's a quest already called Nostalgia. But there's going to be a whole quest line called Nostalgia that is going to be to unlock all the rewards that you get from either EOD or Unheard Edition, including stuff like the additional pocket sizes. So, uh, you know, the whole pay to win thing of being unheard, having the bigger pockets, you'll actually be able to unlock those um, by actually complete, completing quests. Now, all of this stuff here up to this point, by the sounds of it, is all going to be happening in that patch in the next couple of weeks. And then also, they did say there will be compensation added for successful reports to cheaters. So if you report someone, they get banned, you'll get some sort of compensation. Don't know what that is yet, but that is what that is. Now, last but not least, before the big patch being the wipe, the 0.15, there is going to be the in-game polls being added to the game. So during all those June and July patches, they will uh, include the polls added to the game and that's where they're getting a lot of the feedback within that now moving on the next major patch though the, the big the big one is going to be patch 0.15 or 0.15 uh, that is going to be early August and it will contain a wipe. That is the next major patch and that is when the wipe will be. So there is a lot that's going to be included in this, but I'll start off with saying that the founding raid or non-founding raid on flea market will stay for the wipe and inertia will not be changed. So there won't be any uh, changes to the inertia making it any more like difficult or worse or stronger. And it'll just stay where it currently is. And uh, apparently everyone's happy with that. So let's leave it with that. As for that patch, there's going to be the new hideout zones. Um, it looks like there's going to be some sort of ritual zone and then there's like another area or maybe that was the ritual zone area um, that before it was like upgraded. It looked like a heap of trash on the ground pretty much. But um, maybe someone said it might be a podcast area. There's also going to be this section where there's going to be mannequins, mannequins, mannequins with gear. Uh, and this is something I was preaching about a long while ago where uh, it's kind of like the rust lockers. So you'll be able to actually have like, it looked like five loadouts in that, in the maybe a little bit more like six or seven loadouts. Uh, where you're actually able to fully set out your loadout on that character and then pretty much you press one button and it exchanges and it just sends everything across to you and you now have that on. So particularly if you're playing as a squad, um, if you die and your mate's still in the raid and he's getting your gear out, all that kind of stuff, you'll literally be able to go into your, you know, your hideout or whatever it is and you'll be able to load up all these mannequins with all the loadouts ready to go 
So then that way when you die, you can literally press one button and your whole next kit is ready to go. So really exciting uh, to see that. That's something I've been hoping for for a long time. Um, and it means that you'll hopefully be able to spend a lot more time just actually going into raids and less time fucking around your stash trying to get everything set up. Now, as for guns, uh, there was a fair few guns that were showcased. There was the Uzi, the M60. There's also the Desert Eagle that's going to be added, he said. I didn't see any pictures of it, but they said the Desert Eagle. Uh, the SR3M and the ASVL is getting a rework. As for new mechanics, they're going to have the bipod mechanic added to the game where you'll actually be able to place out your bipods on your actual weapon and uh, mount it up against like a, a piece of concrete or something. Uh, and also a wall lean mechanic. So if you go up to a corner of a building, you'll be able to push your arm up against the wall and be able to aim more accurately with less recoil leaning up against the wall. The factory is getting a rework. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this. Factory is my favorite map, um, but apparently they're going to keep the original factory as like a, a legacy event thing that they'll put up every now and then, but they want to rework factory because it's very old and dated with all the graphics and stuff that they've up the, updated in the last eight years. And so it's going to have a bit of a makeover. And uh, I think it sounds like they're going to do a full maker, like full rework of the whole factory, like factory remastered. Uh, there's going to be an event where you'll be able to do location to location travel. Um, and I think after the events, that's when it will stay in the game. And then same with the mortar strike events. There'll be an event where, you know, there'll be mortar strikes coming down. And then um, from post the event, it looks like you'll be able to actually call in mortar strikes from time to time. Now, one of the least liked things that I've heard that they're going to add to this game is tripwires and landmines. They're going to have it so they're actually fixed within the game uh, and places that you won't expect. Uh, and But you'll also have the ability to tripwire containers and bodies uh, and also you know, place landmines around them. Um, but however, you will have the option to disable those landmines or those tripwires. So for example, um, you know, if you're wanting to have a body, you could place a tripwire on it. So then someone goes to loot it, they'll blow up, but you'll actually be physically able to see that. So before you go to loot it, you can actually say, Hey, there's a fucking tripwire there. Better disable it. Now the, uh, there's a new boss. It sounds like party Sam. And I think Nikita did a post on Twitter recently, um, showcasing party Sam. So I'll just quickly show you those that. So you understand what I think it is. Um, but if it's not party Sam, then it's probably going to be a different one called Partisan. So I believe it's going to be this one, but it could be a different one. So he's going to focus on people with bad karma and they're going to, he's going to, like if you're negative karma, you'll get chased down by the boss and killed. The way it's going to work is they're going to implement karma to the game uh, for PMCs, but they're not going to say how it works. And then they're just going to let people kind of figure it out. Um, they're not excited about data miners ruining that for them. But they think it's going to be a cool idea that if you are sitting near an extract for too long, you'll then get, you know, negative karma. They're also going to lower the progression rate in PvE mode. So uh, you won't be able to fly through PvE mode as fast. They kind of want to make it that if you are going to pay, play PvE mode, that you actually get the enjoyment of progressing through the game over a longer period of time. Um, so instead of just like you're finishing it and they're like, I'm never playing this game again. Well, you'll have that option instead of just wiping. Um, they're going to fix a lot of the clipping of gear with helmets and armor. The grenade selection will by pressing G. So what will happen, happen by the sounds of it, uh, with this patch, you'll be able to hold down the letter G, scroll your mouse wheel, and you'll be able to pick which grenade you want to use. So instead of it just being randomized, it'll be like, hey, I want to use my HE grenade or my impact nade, whatever it is that you have in your rig or in your pockets. Uh, they're also going to add it so that you'll have armbands on both shoulders instead of just one. Um, they're going to also make it that weapons within containers aren't always going to be 100%. They're going to be somewhat uh, destroyed or damaged. And therefore, you'll, um, you know, won't always have a perfect weapon in there. I do believe this will also mean that will actually change the mods on a weapon that will be in a container. And it won't be just fixed to being the default stock one as well. He said there's going to be lots of technical stuff. And last but not least, big list of audio changes, including the occlusion algorithm for performance optimization. Someone in chat told me that one, uh, which was his exact quote. And this is generally our biggest issue with audio that um, for people that don't understand, Generally speaking, the audio directional is not that bad. Like it has its moments, particularly when you're in buildings, but it's when it, you cannot hear someone completely when you're standing on a staircase, that's when it's the worst. So you go, I didn't even hear the guy and he was literally sprinting up a staircase. So occlusion audio is where Tarkov has its biggest issues and they're changing it up. So no promises is gonna be good, but let's just hope that it's better. So let's leave it at that. Now, after, after the August what? He said in September, they're going to TwitchCon in America. America. And then after that, October has huge events. And he was like teasing it, but he didn't really say anything else after that. He goes, oh, I'm not going to tell you. Um, then also there's going to be the autumn season will happen around then. 
Sometime around this period, he said that there's also going to be the option that in PvE mode, you're going to be able to pick the season and also um, how difficult the game mode is, if it's going to be easy mode or hard mode. Now, whilst all this is going on, a large portion of the team is actually working on the 1.0 patch. It looks like they're trying to push towards that patch as soon as possible. And they're mainly focusing on like the new graphics and the main storyline and actually the terminal map for the completion of the game. So um, that is where the large portion of the team is actually working on. And then hopefully... You know, they will release it at some point in my lifetime or my daughter's lifetime. Now, after that, there was a few points and questions and, and random questions from the from the chat. So um, the killer achievement, this is one of the things I think I brought up in my interview with him. He said that's going to be once you unlock the killer achievement. Now, I don't think this is the 50 kill one. This is the 100 kill one. When you unlock the killer achievement, you'll be able to have the killer tracksuit from day one of the wipe. So um, if you go to the effort killing killer 100 times, you'll be able to have his tracksuit all the time whenever you want it. No questions asked. Well, obviously, you have to pay for it, most likely. Um, stash locking is coming to the game. To reiterate from my interview, apparently, he said something along the lines of, they've got one branch of the of the game with it in there, but it's got needs more testing to actually make it be able to come into the game. But yeah, it's planned. Uh, continuous healing, they're working on making that and adding that to the game. Scaving into a random map, unless high rep is going to be coming to the game. So uh, he didn't say when. It could be in one of these patches, but... They're going to make it that it will be completely random when you're at a normal or low rep with scav, um, selecting your scav run. Uh, and then when you get to high rep, you'll be able to pick specifically which map you'll be able to go to. In saying that, this is actually going to be really good for particularly early wipe with uh, scav loading times. It'll actually make it that scavs will get spread out uh, instead of like everyone trying to scav into a factory raid or a streets raid to capitalize on the biggest loot or whatever they're trying to do. Um, this will actually make it that you'll explore more maps and spread out some of the loading time because that's... Generally, the reason why you got like a 15, 20 minute scav timer at the start of a wipe is generally because there's too many people trying to scav onto the map you're picked. So this will help combat some of that at least. Uh, they're adding the option to swap between EOD and unheard tags. If you want to have like the golden crown or the blue squiggle, you know, that's, that'll be there. The prestige system's going to be in 1.0, he said. Uh, and they're going to be adding more adjustments to settings, stuff like mouse uh, sensitivity. So you, you can have extra decimal places with that. Touched on, last but not least, the DLCs after 1.0 being Scav Life and the Clown Diaz DLC or the Clan DLC. So, and that will be included if you buy the Edge of Darkness or the Unheard Edition. And he made jokes about that. That is pretty much everything that he spoke about during this whole um, cast. Um, just whilst I'm here, I'm selling t-shirts. It's the unshirt. Uh. I don't know if Nafa put in the actual thing, but it's, uh, I paid $250 and all I got is this lousy t-shirt. You can uh, you can purchase this shirt by going to pestily.com if you want to support me and my team. It's the greatest way you can do it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I haven't really been making much Tarkov content. I've kind of just been spending more time with my family and uh, working outside, trying to get ready for this winter that's about to smash my property. So um, that's why I haven't really been doing much content at all, really. And uh, I do plan to get right back into it, but I've got a couple of things coming up over the next weeks. So, um, you know, bear with me. I will be getting back into the full swing of things around early June. I mean, August, because that's when the wipe will be. So I'd say by mid-July, I'm going to be f going crazy playing video games again because I actually really enjoy playing Escape from Tarkov, even when they're all, there's all this bullshit going on. I'm not really a big drama person. I'm not, not trying to rant on here at all, but I'm not really a big drama person. I do love this game very much, and I just like to play it. So I'll leave it at that. Much love. Um, like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe! And hit the notification bell if you want to keep up to date with the latest stuff. Raid series is out there. If you guys are new to Tarkov and you want to learn Escape from Tarkov, uh, say hi to chat. And um, last but not least, I'll see you next time.